Hey guys, welcome to the garage. I want to do a quick video on how I restored my alternator. This alternator is from a 1963 Corvette. Um, this video is good if you're restoring any type of alternator for a GM car. Um, this also cross, uh, crosses over into other cars because alternators are pretty simple and they follow the same general principle. So I did a full restoration on this. I took it completely apart. I sandblasted the case. I cleaned all the internals. Uh, I put new diodes in it. I put new brushes in it. New connectors. A couple new bolts. I put a new front bearing in it. Restored this bearing. The works and it works great. So if you're going to tackle this project at home, one of the first things you're going to come across is you need to take off the front fan and pulley. Um, if you have a wrench, a crescent wrench big enough to take this off, or if you have an Allen wrench to hold that, it's not that big of a deal. But if you don't, I don't have one big enough. So um, you can set this up in a vise and you can put the fan on the edge and hit it with an impact wrench to hold the alternator from spinning. Another way to take it off is if you have an old fan belt, you can loop the fan belt around the pulley, then you can get a vise and you clamp the belt in there tight so that way it doesn't let this spin and you can hit it with an impact or a ratchet if you don't have an impact and you can get this nut off. Um, make sure that when you take it off, you don't lose this little spacer that goes on the edge here that prevents the fan from hitting the case. That's an important key there because most kits don't come with that. So I bought a kit to restore this off of eBay. It was a nice kit. Here's what's left from the bag. I didn't use everything out of it. I have some extra bolts and a capacitor left, but I ended up replacing my brush housing. So it came with a whole new housing that had the brushes mounted to it. As you can see, these brushes are pretty well worn out. So that was nice just to be able to replace the whole unit. And it came with this pin already placed in there. So the brushes were already stuck in place. So that way you could just mount it inside the case and you were good to go. Um, so whenever you take apart your housing, what you want to do is you want to carefully um, diagnose everything. So as you can see, I have my uh, Corvette service manual here and you had to do a couple tests to check for opens in the rotor. You can also do it um, in the windings here. You can see there's different tests to do. And if your ohmmeter has um, a diode checker, you can check the diodes in there also, which most likely everything should be fine. Just check for abnormal amounts of corrosion. I had a little bit of corrosion that was trying to get on the windings, so I cleaned that off with a little bit of connector cleaner. You can get this at Walmart or any hardware or auto parts store. It works really well. It evaporates a lot of the dirt and stuff off of it. Um, I recommend cleaning the windings off with this. The rotor, I cleaned that off. And it's important to make sure you clean off these contacts here. These two contacts are what, it's what our brushes ride on. So we wanna make sure a nice clean surface. You can scuff it down with some Scotch-Brite pads. I like to use the red or the brown pad, whatever, maroon, whatever color you'd say that is. I like to use these pads. They work really well for taking off that little bit of residue that these leave from wearing on them for all those years. So I did that. Um, to get the bearings out of the case, I just used my Arbor Press that I got from Harbor Freight. It works really nice. I just put um, a socket on top that matches the size of my bearings and that came out really easily. They say you should always repair, replace the front bearing whenever you do one of these as you can probably hear it's not in the best of shape. The rear bear, bearing was fine um, so I just used that one because I don't know if you can see that well on the camera but it says made in the USA on it and I used the original capacitor because they were stamped um, with numbers. I wanted to be able to see that since I'm building a correct Corvette um, I just hit this with some Scotch-Brite and I cleaned that off with Scotch-Brite and hit it with some cast blast as I did with some other bolts that you can see. I wanted to keep the original head markings. But to do these stamps I have shown in the camera, I used this little Office Depot kit. You can get it online also. It doesn't have to be from Office Depot. But it comes with a bunch of different little letters that you pick up with these tweezers or with your fingers and you can set them in on these grooved stamps. So I have a black ink pad here now. So I just stamped 
them on there, made sure they were clean. And then I used some clear coat, this brown on top of them. This is the clear coat that I sprayed on the diodes. Um, it's just a cryon chalky finish. I wanted to have something that wasn't too glossy because it doesn't look like there's clear on it right now. The only problem is, is to make sure you spray this far enough away from the diodes um, for the first couple coats because if you don't, then it's just going to dissolve all of it away immediately. It's, I don't know if it's the solvents in this whenever you spray it, but it removes it completely. So be careful of that if you go this route. Uh, I used new diodes because I wanted to have a nice finish on them. My other diodes, as you can see up here, they were pretty crusty looking and I didn't want to see those through the back. And the wires were all, they, they checked out okay, they were fine. They still work, but the wires are a little um, junky looking. I didn't want to have any failures later on after I got it back together. So I replaced that. So I sandblasted my housing in my Harbor Freight sandblaster. Um, didn't take very long. I did, um, on the heat sink, I did inside and out. As you can see here on the heat sink, I did both sides of this. It was pretty small. I completely disassembled it. I pressed all the diodes out of this, um, which you have to be very careful with that you don't crack your housing. It's, it gets very thin in some of these areas, so you have to watch out for that. Um, did that, sandblasted it. Once it was apart, cleaned it, cleaned off the coils, and then I sprayed this edge black because that shows between the housing. Um, then I hit this with a little bit of silicone spray just to keep it nice. Make sure whenever you're taking your alternator apart, you take lots of pictures of the inside components. I already have mine assembled, so I really don't want to take it apart again because then the brushes pop off and I have to play with that again. But um, if you take lots of pictures whenever you take it apart, it's a lot easier to put it back together so you can remember what order everything goes. Alternators are very straightforward on the inside. There's just a couple things that I noticed along the way that I wish I would have known at the beginning. There's a nice little spacer. It's a little thicker than this that goes in front of the rotor here that keeps it from having too much end play since this gets sandwiched in between here. Also there's a little, you can see the new one here, this little retainer goes over the rear bearing and that just kind of keeps dirt from getting in there while it's spinning. So I mentioned earlier that I replaced the whole brush assembly in my alternator. You can see it here. This is for an externally regulated alternator. You'll have these connectors. But some of the newer later uh, alternators, they have an internally regulated voltage, so you won't have these connectors. You'll have two connectors. But on this one, you have these connectors. So this will be where your pin is. This comes installed. So make sure whenever you're done, you pull this pin out because it won't spin with the pin in there. It'll definitely cause some damage inside there. Alright guys, if you thought this video was useful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if this is your first time checking out the channel, please check out my other videos. I don't have many up right now, but I'm planning on doing a bunch of other restorations in the future for my Corvette. Um, it's a matching numbers Corvette that's been parked since the 80s, so I'm doing a full restoration on that. Um, it's a great project. Be sure to check it out. I'm going to do uh, my fuel pump carburetor. I have uh, headlight motors to do for my Corvette. I'll be doing a gauge cluster eventually. Um, I'll be recovering my fiberglass dash. Eventually I'm probably going to get to work on my patina hood wall hanger. Um, I have a bunch of other stuff. I'm doing a f factory matching number 63 split window. So I'm going to have a ton of content coming on that, especially when we get it back from the body shop. Um, the rest of the videos won't be like this setup where I'm just talking about a finished product. I'll be actually restoring it in the video. Um, I'll probably do some little updates or show you little tips or time lapses as, as I go. Um, I'll post a couple links in the description, one for the eBay link that I got all these parts from. Uh, I recommend getting the deluxe kit. It had everything um, in it that I needed. You had to reuse a few bolts, but other than that, it had everything you needed. It's only like 30 bucks. And I'll also put a link in the description for a Super Chevy um, article that went through restoring an alternator. Um, it didn't say how it did some of these things, so that's why I want to make this video to point out a couple extra tips to you guys, so that way you have the full set of instructions and you can take what you want from it. Um, we're doing the whole car, so be sure to check 
those out if you're interested in watching a Corvette restoration. Soon we're going to get the car back from the body shop. So we'll be doing some videos on that. And that's about it, guys. So be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.